Good morning, friends. We're going to hold off for people to show up. It's like the lights doing something a little bit weird. There we go. Oh. Let's see here. I wonder if it's just something how the screen is getting held. That's going to get annoying. Good morning. Hey, Joanne. There we go. Okay, there was something weird was going on with the uh, light on the screen. So, just quick question: Can you hear the music without it interfering with what I'm doing? Granted, if it is interfering with what I'm doing, you probably can't hear me. But uh, I always get concerned about whether or not the music is going to be overwhelming. And today, particularly, the music is important to what we're going to be doing. Uh, and I'll have to mention this again a few times later as other people are listening. But uh, as I have commented on a couple of different things, uh, after last week uh, catching a line of black from one of my faithful viewers that uh, I needed to have a new t-shirt on, instead of an old t-shirt while I was watching this stuff. Um, so my niece arranged for me to get a new shirt. And so this week we are being s sponsored actually by the Occidental Hotel in uh, Buffalo, Wyoming. It's the oldest hotel in the state of Wyoming. Awesome place, 1880s, uh, lots of great stuff. Uh, David and Jackie Stewart who currently run it, they were the ones who actually got me this shirt. And the reason why this does not say Buffalo, Wyoming or the Occidental Hotel, it says I'm in a bluegrass state of mind because they are kind of the epicenter of the bluegrass movement in uh, Buffalo, Wyoming. And that's the music that you're hearing right now is music from Thursday evening. If you listen to, if you go to the Occidental, uh, if you go to the Occidental Hotel in um, Buffalo and you go to their Facebook page, uh, every uh, Thursday night uh, they do a bluegrass jam. And if you go to uh, David Stewart, who's involved with the hotel, if you go to his Facebook page, he's been playing pretty much every single night while everybody is out. So if you get a chance, go to uh, Occidental Hotel, uh, follow them. Buffalo, Wyoming is right at the foot of the Bighorn Mountains over on the east side. Uh, you've got, uh, was it I-35 runs north, no, I-25 runs north and south right there. I-80 runs into it from the east, or is that I, no, that's I-90 runs into it from the east, because it's 94 that's farther north. Don't mind me. Anyway, so you've got several interstates all coming together. You can come over the Bighorn Mountains to it. Uh, the Occidental Hotel, great place to stay. Uh, we were there over spring break just a year ago. Uh, where I yours really got to perform the wedding ceremony for my niece. Uh, she and her husband lived there in Buffalo. So it was great. Got to stay at the great hotel. Got to eat at the uh, the Busy Bee, the little cafe right there. Awesome breakfast food. You eat at the, uh, the Virginian, named after the novel. Very good steakhouse. Uh, famous history to the place. Uh, Buffalo Bill stayed there. TR stayed there. Uh, Frank Ken, the famous U.S. Marshal, stayed there. Uh, Butch and Sundance. I mean, it's like you sit there and start running down this whole long list of people. A lot of people stayed at the Buffalo. I mean, in, in Buffalo at the Occidental. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is also if you are staying in Buffalo or you're visiting Buffalo, Buffalo right around the corner from the Occidental Hotel, the Jim Gatchel Museum. We've got a personal friend who is the director there. Awesome museum, great collection, neat stuff, and uh, just... Remember your museums during this time. So, uh, so with that done, I'm going to start getting my stuff together for today. And speaking of uh, speaking of Buffalo, Wyoming, uh, I see somebody just popped in from Buffalo, Wyoming. But I am going to start getting all my stuff together. I had thrown together a list of ingredients over the course of this last week. Among those ingredients, I wish I had, I should have had a little more hand prepped, but, um, 
we just had Easter last week. And so one of the things that we do for Easter is our household has usually has a ham. And so we now have ham out our ears. So what we do is, as with a lot of us, we end up reusing, like after Thanksgiving, we do turkey on everything, we do ham after Easter on everything. So uh, we're gonna be doing uh, some stuff with some of our leftover ham. Got the shredded hash browns. You can use just regular potatoes, just julienne them if you have where you want to. Cheddar cheese. I've got some fresh onion. Uh, we don't always do this with onion, but you can do it with onion. Don't mind that, that's the coffee pot. And eggs. So, uh, and if you're tuning in late, uh, just wanted to let everybody know again, today's episode is sponsored by the Occidental Hotel. They were in Buffalo, Wyoming. They were very nice to send me this t-shirt, brand new. Uh, I'm a bluegrass state of mind. They are a, a big bluegrass, a blue, bluegrass area in that part of the country. Uh, they have a bluegrass festival in uh, Buffalo every year. And the uh, uh, David Stewart, who is between David and Jackie, they run the place. Uh, David Stewart's a bluegrass musician. That is his music that you're hearing going on uh, while we are uh, doing this. So uh, if you can't hear the music, let me know. I'll turn it up a little bit more. But with the uh, next step that we're going to start doing on this, I have to start getting uh, some of the food prepped. Uh, everything else so far is out. So as I said again, we're dealing with shredded hash browns. Yep, and Longmire Days in July, as Lisa just pointed out. I've got some uh, previously julienne onion that I'm going to dice up a little bit smaller for this. Cheddar cheese. Leftover ham. And you can use for this uh, ham, bacon, sausage, any type of, like what you typically think of as a breakfast meat. We just have leftover ham from Easter. So I'm using that. And then the usual variety of uh, spices. And then eggs. And a lot of people, uh, the whole concept of hash brown waffles kind of confuses some people because, well, they don't think of uh, hash browns as being used in things like waffles. They're used to you know, like regular waffles or savory waffles, which that's a whole nother thing. Um, this is not a uh, flour-based waffle. This is something that I ended up kind of making up one day when I figured it out that you could do this. And then um, you've done, I've done, uh, and I've seen some people doing this after Thanksgiving. There's some amazing Thanksgiving waffles that you can do. Um, take stuff like the stuffing, take, uh, uh, mince up some ham, throw in uh, just any of the other stuff, a little bit of mashed potatoes, throw a couple of other things from your Thanksgiving feast the day before, uh, throw them all together, scramble them with some eggs and uh, not a lot of egg, but just the egg to bind it all together. And then you can do waffles with that as well. So what I'm gonna do here is take about four cups of, hey, well, you know, Dave's actually measuring for a change. So I'm gonna take about four cups of potatoes. I'm gonna take that, nice big handy dandy four cup, I'm gonna throw them in the microwave. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the sound of the microwave. I'm gonna put those in there for about two minutes just to thaw them out a bit and get them so everything can come on together. Good morning, ceiling, and good morning, everybody else. I know that you're all kind of popping in and some of you are popping out. So uh, that was about four cups of hash browns. It's about half of this big bag. I'm gonna start prepping some of the other stuff that I have here while that's cooking up. I know I have to talk loudly over the sound of the microwave and you can't hear the music. And again, big tip, if you have a slippery surface and you're trying to use a plastic cutting board, throw down a towel. I'm going to take that towel, throw it down, put my cutting board down. There you go. Pull out my good friend, the chef's knife. Every time that you ever use a chef's knife, you should always run the hunting steel. I use this, I call it the uh, awful ground method for hunting. People always end up forgetting how many times did you go on either side. Six on one side, five on the other, four, three, two, and then one, and then 
you're all nice and hung. And if you have uh, decent uh, kitchen knives that you have not had sharpened in a while, go get them sharpened. At least once a year. At least once a year, get them sharpened. And there's people all over the place who can do this. So, I'm going to have, I feel kind of onion today. I'm going to have about a cup of onion or so. I'm going to take these. And I'm going to, they're julienne, like so slivers, that's julienne. I'm going to take these and I am going to kind of mince them up a little bit more, or dice them, I should say. There we go. And again, uh, the bluegrass music you're hearing is from Thursday night's jam session at the Occidental Hotel in Buffalo, Wyoming. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by the Buffalo Hotel. If you are at a uh, museum or business or something like that and you feel like sponsoring the show or you just want to see me wearing your shirt, feel free to send me something. You can always pop me that and pop a request in my DMs and I'll take a look at it. Uh, there we go. So... I think I'm happy with how that stuff is. So, I've got a nice pile of onion. I'm going to take that and dump that into my big bowl that I will be mixing into. And again, I hope everybody is being happy and safe at home. Everybody's kind of trying to get along and do their best. So there's my onion. I don't have as much ham as I was hoping for, but I'm going to go ahead and use all of this ham that I have. And again, with the ham, you're going to do the same thing that I just did with the onion, is I'm going to dice it up. And I would normally use my chef's knife. I mean, I, uh, I have a different knife with a thinner blade that I would use for... Most of my uh, cutting of the meat just works a little bit different, but this works just fine, and more importantly, I don't have to get anything else dirty. And for those who, uh, like the next step on this is I'm going to, there we go, that looks like that's in pretty good shape. I'm going to add that all in. So I've got onion, I have ham. Oh, it's always one of my favorite songs. Um, Long Black Veil, uh, old, old traditional song. Uh, Chieftains made it really popular back in the 90s, I think, on a uh, compilation that they did. Uh, but again, uh, if you haven't caught, the music we're listening to today is from uh, the Occidental Hotel in Buffalo, Wyoming, the people who are sponsoring today. Uh, I am going to now add, before I put the hash browns in, I am going to shred a healthy amount of cheese. And like with most other things in the kitchen, Going with cheap cheese is not a happy way to start life. You start dealing with some cheeses that tend to be almost to the point of rubber when you handle them. And you do not want that. Nobody deserves that in their life. All right. All right. So, I've got a nice little healthy pile of Cheddar cheese. We never have too much cheese. I'm sure, somebody's going to be able to prove me wrong on that one, but so nice, happy pile of cheese. Uh, since these are going to be going to three people, I am going to use three eggs, and I'm going to crack these in here before I put. Just crack them straight in. They'll get mashed up plenty enough. Don't, don't have that shell in there. 
So, three eggs. And I just crack my eggs on the stuff. Hey, Lisa, how are you doing? Now, Tillamook cheese is uh, Tillamook cheese, cabbage cheese. There's a couple other really good ones. Uh, just stay away from craft. Stay away from as, as proud as I am of the region uh, that I live in right now. Uh, Highland cheese is not good cheese. Um, so for anybody in Oklahoma or this area, so the four cups of hash browns, they get dumped in. Okay, kosher salt, about half a teaspoon. Pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. And then liberally sprinkle. Uh, I've got garlic powder that I'm using. I could do fresh garlic if I wanted, but I don't. If you don't have fresh onion, you've got onion powder. So, I'm going to go ahead and get the cutting board out of the way. I'm going to set the knife by the sink. I'm going to refresh my coffee. And uh, I know I haven't said it yet, but I am so happy to see so many people having stopped in today. Uh, just get a chance to... Uh, I really do enjoy and appreciate getting a chance to uh, talk to people about just life and everything else going on during this time. While I put up the ingredients, I am going to plug in my waffle iron that we have. We've got one of these. It's a Farberware. It's you can get these at Walmart or anywhere else. Uh, it's a Belgian waffle press, but you can use any waffle press. They're all designed to be able to take this kind of load. Uh, I had a question from a friend of mine earlier this week about whether or not you could do this with the George Foreman drill. I expect you could. You would have to be a little bit more careful. The great thing is this is not runny liquid like uh, a conventional waffle, so you don't have to worry about uh, that stuff running off the end of the grill. Let's see. Eggs need to go up. Onion needs to go up like that. And the cash browns in the freezer. Place for everything and everything in its place. Now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and No need to get fancy on this. Just big spoon, pile of stuff in here, and so you just need to make sure that it's all stirred around. You've got egg in here now. I've got your breakfast. It's hash browns, eggs, ham, or if you want to use sausage or bacon or something like that. Um, and there's no reason you can't do this with any sort of vegetarian options, vegan options. Um, because honestly, a lot of this stuff, the base of it, is already kind of leaning that direction. If you're lacto ovo vegetarian, just leave the egg, drop the meat. There's plenty of meat substitutes. All right. So now I have this happy mush that is all in there. And so once you get this all mushed up together like this, um, and this is part of the reason why you uh, microwave to thaw out the hash browns is so when you put them into the waffle press that they come down and the waffles, uh, like it can actually press those down instead of taking these, because otherwise it turns into like Lincoln logs you toss on the floor or pickup sticks and they all end up locking in and they don't compress. This will compress. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to throw away my eggshells. I am going to have a sip of coffee. And again, because I promised that I would do so, I am again going to plug the sponsors for today. This is, see, this is the kind of service you get if you send me a new t-shirt. I'm more than happy to start plugging stuff. So <laughs> I have happy much, yes, just like Bob Ross. Uh, 
So uh, today's sponsor is, again, uh, David and Jackie Stewart of the Occidental Hotel in Buffalo, Wyoming. And it's the oldest hotel in Wyoming, 1880s. Uh, also, from what I understand, it is the most uh, haunted hotel in Buffalo, Wyoming. Uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure if we really had what you could call an experience there, but the night, the couple nights that we were there, um, it, it was just kind of weird. But, uh, so we're going through and doing our thing. Um, but the, uh, it was a great weekend that we were there. Uh, I got to be there to be the officiant at my niece's wedding. That's something else is if, uh, in this time, if you need somebody to, uh, perform those services, I would be more than happy to try to do what I can to make sure that that happens. Uh, Non-denominational, LGBT plus friendly, I am more than happy to be there. Um, so, uh, anyway, back to the Occidental. Um, oldest hotel uh, in Wyoming, uh, Buffalo Bill stayed there, Theodore Roosevelt stayed there, uh, Butch and Sundance, Calamity Jane, uh, Tom Horn, famous assassin of uh, sheep herders. Um, Bluegrass, uh, the Bluegrass Jam that goes on there uh, is in during regular times, weekly, but even so, uh, the music that you hear in the background right now, I uh, know that they're just talking, is on the Occidental's uh, Facebook page every Thursday night. They've still been doing this from within there, just essentially having a small jam. Uh, but then David Stewart also, pretty much every evening on his own personal Facebook page, is playing Bluegrass music from there. And so it's a really neat thing. Uh, the Virginia Steakhouse there is great stuff. Uh, the Busy Bee Cafe, awesome breakfast. Um, Jim Gatchel Museum around the corner. I always have to shout out for the uh, museums in the area. And we are ready to go over here. We're gonna open that up. Always spray your hands. Otherwise, nothing but disappointment. Nothing but disappointment comes from there. So I'm going to try and do this backwards. All right. I've got my stuff on there. I'm going to take it. I'm going to push it around. Make sure, Because this isn't like your regular waffles. You might have to put a little bit of extra force into it. And make sure you let it cook all the way through. So... That's in the waffle press. Can you see that? Let me see. Yeah, you should be able to see that. There we are. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I couldn't quite tell because of, on the screen for the phone, there's all kinds of extra little nonsense going on. But uh, I hope everybody is having a good day. Uh, we are, <laughs> yeah, it's like day 45. No, um, we are all staying happy and healthy and staying away from people. Um, it's still disconcerting uh, knowing friends who are in parts of the country that have been on complete lockdown. I have a very wonderful friend in New York City. Uh, he lost, uh, well, his uh, next door neighbor got carted out uh, yesterday and to the hospital. And uh, her son was uh, somebody who thought it was all a hoax and was not wearing a mask, not wearing gloves, not cleaning up, not anything but going out regularly for cigarettes, thought it was all fake. He came back and now he's going to social distance himself. So, uh, sorry, dude, you're too late. You just did that to your mom. So, uh, on that bright sunshiny note, we're going to, yep. Now I'm just basically it's a waiting game. I'm going to go grab a plate that I can throw these onto and, uh, we'll be able to keep talking about this stuff. So, um, and if you can't hear the music that's going on, uh, go ahead and who gave me the angry face? Was that somebody responding to that guy's story? If somebody gave, if somebody gave me an angry face, I want to know who it was. Well, I'll, just, I'll find out who it was later. I'm guessing it was in response to the story of that guy, um, uh, going out and probably getting his mom sick. But, um, for uh, these hash browns themselves, like the hash browns uh, out of the waffle press, uh, you can top these with 
oh god forbid salsa i mean uh ketchup i know some people like ketchup on their stuff i used to be that person i'm no longer uh, you can use uh any of the different mexican hot sauces you can use salsa you can use anything else that you would typically use uh to cover your plate or you can just eat it all by itself i always kind of feel it's a little bit dry so i always like having that extra little bit of liquid or sauce or something like that Oh uh, yeah, I was hoping that's what that was because I was almost I would be almost wounded if somebody actually <laughs> gave me an angry face. Um, but uh, and if you guys can't hear the music in the back, I know right now they're kind of in between tunes. But uh, hopefully you guys have been hearing the music; they've been playing really well. So um, other than that, we are continuing on. Uh, Weather has just been weird. Last week was we hit a day in the 80s. Today, it uh, last night it I think got down to freezing. We're just glad that we covered up our roses. Um, that's a sentence I never thought I'd hear out of my mouth. And uh, we can all use this. I need my space right now. But I hope everybody is uh, able to stay safe and doing their things. Uh, again, today we are making the hash brown waffles. I've got my hash browns, eggs, cheese, ham, uh, spices, um, including some fresh onion in there. And so I ladle it out into the waffle press. They come out, they go into their thing. Um, if nothing else, uh, for a sneak peek on... Uh, what I'm going to be doing next week, I already usually I just end up figuring this out like Thursday before Saturday. And uh, I actually figured out uh, this week with all of the excess ham that we have in the household, next week I'm going to make ham horseshoes. And if you have not had a horseshoe sandwich, uh, you are missing out. It's a heart attack on the plate. I have to warn you with that. Uh, we're going to be doing that one next Saturday. And uh, it is one of our favorite meals uh, especially again, post holidays, anytime that we have, like after Thanksgiving, we do turkey shoes after Easter, we'll do ham shoes. I mean, it's just whatever you want to throw. Um, and it's, uh, for those of us who grew up in Illinois, it is something that's warm memories. And this is, I mean, that's one of the things here is these take so much longer to cook than regular waffles. I can sit there and flip it and take a look, but I don't want to. Because you need to make sure that these are done. These are not like uh, regular waffles, like where they'll just sit there and they can get completely burnt. These things just crisp up. And if you, especially if you like crispy. Um, and I know that it'll be coming up here in a minute. So let me grab my plastic fork. Again, if you use any sort of nonstick coated stuff, you do not want to use any metal tools anywhere near nonstick stuff whether it's a skillet or any of the waffle presses, things like that, uh, plastic or wood utensils only. That was one of those things I wish somebody would have taught me a long time ago. But uh, now with our current uh, cooktop, uh, this is a whole long, huge story that we can do about this one. Uh, we lucked into a really great deal on this induction cooktop. Uh, we're gonna get completely spoiled. And, uh, I mean, it really is a nice thing, but we have absolutely no nonstick skillets. Hey, there's the light. There we go. There we are. And you can put that in for uh, a little bit extra, or just leave it in for a little bit extra. I'm going to go ahead and, while it's open, get another one started up. And just put down what looks what looks comfy. But yes, I know I just said no metal utensils around the nonstick surfaces. Oh, and I forgot to spray the bottom. It should be okay. Pull a little bit of the oil that's come out of there. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! Crumble fell off. So, uh, yeah. This is a hash brown waffle. So you've got hash browns, uh, and again, 
frozen hash browns, you take the frozen hash browns, you throw them in the microwave uh, just to thaw them out so they get a little bit more pliable. Uh, frozen hash browns, uh, I started out for this batch with four cups worth. That makes you about three in this Belgian press, uh, about three waffles. Uh, but it's, uh, hash browns, uh, some sort of breakfast meat. Uh, we have lots of leftover ham from Easter, so I have ham in here. Uh, I've got some fresh onion in here, which should be really good. Um, and then a nice happy pile of cheese. Uh, uh, I usually put, try to do about one egg for each one that's going to get produced. And so uh, three of these, three waffles out of this batch, three eggs. Um, and so uh, just throw it in there. And then once they come out, uh, you can top them off with hot sauce or salsa or, like I said, God forbid, ketchup. Uh, but hey, each to their own. I'm not going to judge. Um, if you want, you can just leave them in there a little bit extra long and it will get crispier. Hey, Ryan, what's going on? Glad to see you popped in. Uh, but I hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, again, just as a reminder, uh, today is sponsored by the Occidental Hotel in Buffalo, Wyoming. Give me a nice new t-shirt. If you want to sponsor the show. I don't know. When did I become a show? Uh, if you want to sponsor the show, feel free to send me a t-shirt from your uh, business. Uh, I know I've got lots of friends in business. I've got lots of friends in museums. I've got lots of friends all over the country from California to New York to Vermont to Florida to, heck, Guam. Uh, and uh, actually, no, she's on Japan. Um, so anyway, yeah, just if you want to sponsor the show, by all means, let me know. Send me a shirt. I'll be more than happy to wear a new shirt. Uh, the uh, big one today again is sponsored by the Occidental Hotel in Buffalo, Wyoming. Uh, the reason why this is a bluegrass themed shirt, I mean, a bluegrass state of mind, is because uh, Buffalo, Wyoming is known for its bluegrass festival. Uh, the Occidental Hotel has a uh, live bluegrass jam once a week. Uh, the uh, music that's going to be starting up here again in the background uh, was from just a couple nights ago. So you can go to the Occidental Hotel's Facebook page, uh, check out the music. Uh, David Stewart, uh, who is one of the two people in charge there, David and Jackie Stewart, uh, he has on his own Facebook page, uh, plays bluegrass every, every night at like seven o'clock. Um, that's, uh, oldest hotel in Wyoming. Uh, there's lots of famous people who have stayed there from Buffalo Bill to TR to, uh, criminals like Butch and Sundance, uh, Calamity Jane's there. Uh, Frank Canton was there. Tom Horn was there. Uh, lots of different people. Hey, George, good morning. Uh, so lots of good stuff. I've got that other one in the, uh, that other waffle again, hash brown waffles. are not like your regular flour based waffles. They are just thought out hash browns. You mix in eggs, you mix in whatever spices you want, cheese, uh, onion. I mean, you can throw in here. It's kind of like a lot of the other stuff that I've cooked previously. Uh, my ramen from last week, uh, you can throw in anything in here that you want as long as it's good. It's just the hash browns is the starter and the eggs are the binder. As long as you have those two, you've got the form that everything else can fit into. And so if you don't like ham, fine, use sausage or bacon. Uh, if you don't want to use fresh onion, that's great. If you want to throw in, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, feel free. Um but uh, more than happy to uh, keep doing all of this stuff. Again, I already know uh, next week I'm going to be doing uh, horseshoes, uh, horseshoe sandwiches, uh, a delicacy from the great state of Illinois. Uh, I think delicacy is a word that should be used in quotes in this case, though. But uh, it's a good way to get rid of the old ham. Uh, I see there's still uh, some folks who are on here. Uh, I would love to find out if you guys are doing well. And if you are not, uh, I hope better luck for you. I know a lot of us have been busy. A lot of us have been stuck at home. Uh, some of us are continuing to work. Some of us uh, are trying to find our way. And so we're just definitely just trying to do what we can to uh, make the world a little bit better. And so part that's, again, that's part of why I am doing this is I know a lot of people are stuck at home trying to figure out what to do with all the food that I have. Uh, some people are... <laughs> learning or relearning how to cook. Uh, some people are looking at uh, just kind of how to get by. 
And so this also for me is some mental floss that allows me to get a chance to talk to you guys. Uh, I enjoy interacting with all the people I know out in Facebook land, uh, people in the museum field or from my hometown in Illinois or my adopted home out in Arizona uh, or anywhere else that we've lived, uh, Enid, Oklahoma, Cody, Wyoming, here in Fort Smith, Bozeman, Montana, uh, just all over the place. Uh, but yeah, so uh, today, hey, Jan, how are you doing? So uh, this next one, hey, it's lights on. That means this one's finished. And now that the second one, they always end up, they start to, as the waffle iron heats up, they tend to get a little bit more done. Let me go ahead. I'll show that one to you here in a second as soon as I get this last batch thrown on here. And if you can hear the music in the background, that's uh, from the Buffalo Hotel. Oh, sorry, Buffalo, Wyoming Occidental Hotel. There we go. There we go. Let's get that in there. Spread that around. There we go. There we are. And that's the one with that. So, uh, again, today we're making uh, hash brown waffles. And uh, the if you want to see how to actually go through the process of putting these together, you can watch this later on. Let me set these over here. And uh, But we are uh, about ready to have breakfast in the Kennedy household. Oh, I'm glad to see that. Um, that sounds great. Everybody, I mean, it's amazing. Everybody is finding their happy place online. And as far apart as we all are, we're becoming more connected. And that's kind of part of why I do this is I really enjoy getting a chance to show people some of the stuff that I do. Uh, I've always enjoyed cooking for other people and helping people learn things. And so this kind of does that. Uh, and so we get a chance to do this. Uh, but yeah, today, uh, it was hash brown uh, waffles. Uh, essentially, you're taking all of your breakfast, putting it together, and frying it into one big thing. Uh, there's different ways to go about doing it. This is the way that I found that works. Uh, if you, this is the first time that you've caught any of my stuff, go back and watch some of the old Facebook Lives. Uh, last week, I did uh, how to eat ramen the right way, not the way that we all eat it in college. Uh, I've uh, made... Uh, baking powder biscuits, and I made the, I think the episode one was the uh, Kennedy family pancakes. Uh, so I know a lot of this is tended to be breakfast, but uh, next week is going to be uh, horseshoe sandwiches. And so for those of us who grew up in Illinois, that is a fond memory usually. But um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let this finish up. And uh, in the meantime, again, I want to thank David and Jackie Stewart from the Occidental Hotel for the nice new shirt. Uh, thanks for sponsoring this particular episode. If you decide that you want to sponsor an episode and send me a t-shirt, uh, by all means, send me a comment and uh, I'll get back to you with that. Uh, but the Buffalo, uh, Wyoming Occidental Hotel, uh, great place to go. It's an awesome hotel. Uh, it's between the oldest hotel in Wyoming and probably the most haunted hotel in Wyoming. So you can have a whole lot of fun with that. Uh, lots of famous uh, luminaries of the Old West. Uh, stayed there over its time, including myself. Uh, the uh, kept throwing myself in the same category with Buffalo Bill and Tom uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, they also the music that you're hearing in the background is uh, the Bluegrass Jam from the Occidental. Uh, they still do that. Uh, nobody else is there, but they've got the band there, standing six feet apart, and so they've got uh, music that uh, still is getting played there. And then every night. Uh, David Stewart, who is one of the two operators of the Occidental, he's playing bluegrass also. And then every year there's a big bluegrass festival in Buffalo, Wyoming. So it's it's all a real neat thing, and that's the reason why the shirt is I'm in a bluegrass state of mind. It has nothing to do with Kentucky. It's all to do with Buffalo, Wyoming. Uh, and again, while you're in Buffalo, make sure to pop around the corner to the... Uh, to the Jim Gatchel Museum. Really nice museum. Lots of great stories and history there. Uh, some really good surprises that are in their collection. Uh, 
but beautiful place, beautiful part of the country. If you ever find yourself heading to Yellowstone, it's right at the foot of the Bighorn Mountains over on the eastern part of uh, Wyoming, uh, a little bit south of Sheridan, north of Casper. It's a great place to go pop in. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call this one a day and get ready to pull my uh, waffle off. And so we can all sit down and eat our breakfast uh, and then we will get on with our day. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for stuff that you want to see me cook at some point, let me know. Uh, otherwise, make sure to go back and watch my other Facebook lives that I've done. Uh, uh, I've got uh, last week it was uh, well, the very first one was pancakes. The second one was uh, baking powder biscuits. They're so much easier than people might think they are. And then this week, uh, let's see, last week I did uh, how to cook ramen the right way. Uh, as opposed to the way that we all end up eating the little bricks of ramen in college. Uh, hot, salty water is not a way to treat ramen. Um, so then today I did uh, the hash brown waffles. Uh, real easy. A lot of us already have the stuff in our fridge, especially if we still have a whole lot of ham left over from Easter or if you just like sausage or bacon. Great way to go ahead and do that. Hey, Dr. Bob. Good luck with everything that you've got going on. Uh, I know that uh, I'm one of the many people who is trying to pull for you and uh, hope you get well and get well soon. Uh, but we are a uh, real easy recipe. If, you want, if you're intrigued by the whole concept, I'm waiting for that to get done. If you're intrigued by the concept of hash brown waffles, go back, watch the whole video, and uh, learn how to make them. Uh, they're really easy, <laughs> they're really filling, and it's a real easy way to uh, have some uh, good food. Oh, cool, gluten-free ramen. Uh, the uh, <laughs> And then just with all the stuff that you're going to be throwing in on top of the ramen, if you go back and watch my last episode, you can throw anything on there you want. And, I mean, it's, you can turn what's one of the nastiest, unsafe things to eat into one of the healthiest things you can eat. Uh, you just have to do it the right way. So, that's about ready to come up. I've got to get this to my uh, family, and uh, I hope you guys all have a great day. Again, if you are interested in sponsoring the show and sending me a t-shirt, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, again, come back next week. I'm going to be doing horseshoe sandwiches and uh, having a whole lot of fun with those. And I will talk to you later. Stay safe. Stay away from everybody. Be good.